What up gamers? I'm Jason and today on Dice and Dragons I'm going to be teaching you how to play Descent Legends of the Dark published by Fantasy Flight Games and designed by Carrick and Del Dunk and Nathan Hadjik. Now this is an app based cooperative game for one to four players and plays in two to three hours. This has the same designers of the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth and we will be doing the how to play the same manner that we did it for the aforementioned game. In this game, you'll be taking on the roles of Heroes of Terranoth. You have ventured to the Barony of Forthine, which is on the outskirts of the realm. Uh, probably the farthest barony away from the capital, Capital uh, actually. It borders the realm of the demonic barbarian horde, the Uthuk Yalan, and they are beginning to make an incursion into the barony. You'll be going on different quests as you are based out of the free city of Frostgate in order to defend the barony and along those quests, you're going to be progressing in the overall story and each character's own personal story while you'll be upgrading your weapons in a manner similar to uh, RPG video games. I think I covered enough about the game. Let's get to the teach. Now I'm gonna teach you how to play Descent Legends of the Dark. Well, I skipped over the first part of getting the app set up because it's not all that interesting and we have to skip through a bunch of stuff. The first thing you're gonna do is open the app, select a new campaign, enter the name of your party, and then you're just going to go through all of the story that will give you some background on the world of Terranoth and then some story about the characters themselves. As you can see, we can select four heroes. Uh, for the case of teaching you the game, we're just gonna select two of them to just go over in detail a little bit more about the heroes we've got Bryn the human avenger who is your more tanky character as you can see because of uh, their health we've got cyrus the human prodigy who is your mage character we have galadin the elf huntsman who is your ranged uh well your ranger character so great at range attack but uh don't worry they can handle things up close as well we've got Varix, the Dragon Hybrid Outcast, who hits like a truck as well, depending on the weapon and uh, also the weaknesses that we'll talk about in a minute. They're also the healer. And then we've got Keeley and Chance. Now these two characters are gonna join your party a little bit later on, uh, so don't worry. They're included for a reason and they will join your party sometime after the first quest. Now, what you're gonna need to do in the app you select your heroes, and in this case, we're gonna pick Bryn and Cyrus. So we can hit confirm. And then we're going to be off to the races in terms of what we will be doing in the app. Now, I'm gonna take a quick pause from the app for a second, and we're going to just take a look at setting up our characters. So what do we need to do for the character setup? Well, you'll need to take their character sheet, you want to place that in front of you. You will need two health dials set at their health, proper health amount. I'm gonna place it over here actually, just looks a little bit better. And then you're gonna wanna have one for print as well, of course. You will also need to take out their weapons. Now one thing I want you to take a look at here as you, as you can see, we've got the Warden's Blade. It's dual sided. We've got some other weapons that Bryn will be able to use. We also have the weighted hammer, dual sided. And what you'll notice here, and this is because we've got the uh, promo items from pre-ordering, we've got just different art cards for these blades. Now what you do is you're going to insert them in a plastic sleeve like you see here, and these will represent your starting weapon. So let's just take a look at them in more detail. So these are the original cards as you can see here. So we've got the Warden's Blade. Now you've got the upgraded version, which you can tell just by the two arrows. So essentially what you do is you put them back to back in the, in the sleeve and you are good to go. So we have to do that for each of the characters and you can decide whatever side you would like your card to be on. It is the same with the hero cards. They're double sided. So you can place them on either side. And then all of the rest of these cards, well, they're gonna show up later on in the game as you play. Another thing that you will not be using at the start is the hero's skills. 
Later on in the game, there's something known as the feet system, which will become available. And then you'll be able to get these one XP skills and you can have as many of them as you can unlock as you are playing through the game. It'll tell you what skills that you have available. There are also two XP skills, three XP skills. So lots of cool stuff that you'll be able to gain. Now, just to go over the other components that we're not gonna be using at the start, you've got armor as well as trinkets that you're going to gain as you're questing. Now they do specific stuff, armor, well, you can have heavy armor or light armor. You can see what the character class will, well, the character will take. Bryn takes heavy armor, whereas Cyrus takes light armor. So you'll assign it to them as you as you gain these items. Now we've got all other things, trinkets that can do some cool stuff. So like the Undying Skull, after you defeat an enemy, it is the first time any hero with this trinket equipped defeats an enemy, you gain a unique recipe. So that's pretty cool. Lots of neat stuff that you're able to do with these items that come into play a little later. Then we have also an entire stack of consumable cards, which are Vigor Potions, Antidote Potions, and these cards you'll essentially use one time and discard. You'll also be able to gain some recipes, craft these potions, and be able to take them with you at the outset of every adventure. The other thing I wanna do before we go too far into the app is also take a look at what we have on the hero reference cards here. So we got the different conditions, the different enemy statuses, and we also have the hero turns. So it quite clearly states what you can do on your turn. You may perform one maneuver, and a maneuver is a movement action where you'll move your speed, which is listed at the top section of your hero there. You may fight, attack an enemy within range. Range is listed on your hero card. The sword has no range whereas the Glimmering Wand has a range of four. You may ready a card, which will let you flip a card to the opposite side. We'll talk about why you may want to do that in a moment. You can do a unique action, which may be given by a card. Actually, Bryn does have one, so we'll just take a look at that one quickly. So you can see one action. You can shift three, then attack an enemy, and after this attack, you do have to flip the card. We also have the Fatigue Limits, of the cards and in order to do certain abilities you do have to be able to place fatigue on the card so for example the glimmering wand after your attack a hero may shift two you need to be able to place two fatigue on the specific card in order to execute that ability then we've got the explore action which will allow you to interact with terrain or a token we've got the explanation for the dice results and then the conditions are all listed here so let's just go over why you'd want to ready a card. It's also a great example, also oh, a great opportunity for me to talk about the different conditions. So we have the condition, the positive conditions of the blue ones, focus and prepare. Focus lets you reroll a die. The prepare token lets you flip a card. So the card that's been prepared without having to use an action. And pretty cool that I flipped this over. As you can see here, the Crooked Staff has reach, meaning that it can actually reach an extra space. So it's not ranged, but it's not limited to adjacent spaces. Let's put this back on the Glimmering Wand though. Next, we have the statuses of Infection and Terror. At the end of the Hero Phase, these statuses will trigger, causing you to, if you're infected, you will take one damage for each Infection token that you have. If you're terrorized, it's one fatigue for each token that you have. And if you can't place any more fatigue on your cards, well, then you will start taking damage. Lastly, we have the scarred condition, which means when you flip a card, you'll take two damage from that scar. You may also heal conditions with certain cards and abilities throughout the course of the game. So the reason you want to take a ready action is, let's say I've been infected and terrorized by taking a ready action, I get to get rid of all of the conditions, uh, just to mention it, all of the fatigue that's on it. So I will have to take different actions, but it essentially refreshes the card and lets me heal up just a little bit. Next, we've got the tokens that you're going to see on the map. These are just uh, interaction tokens, places that you're going to want to inspect, and sight tokens, which will trigger once you get in range of said tokens. So we've really gone over the basics here. 
Now for more stuff, we're gonna have to go to the app and we will skip ahead at some point just to take a look at the city actions. Now, that'll be from where Julie and I are at in our game, so there, I'm gonna try to avoid any spoilers, but you've been forewarned. So at this point, it says, even if we are near a watchtower, we should set a watch. Bryn says, any volunteers? So we get to decide who will be on watch as we've got a mage or a warrior. I'm gonna pick Bryn to go on watch. So we get some nice text explaining that Bryn is on watch, which is a continue, some more text. Then it's gonna tell us how to go through everything. And we do get a nice explanation of everything such as the underlays, where you can find some of the rules in the reference guide. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is file is find place tile 10B and a water underlay. Now, if you saw, no, I didn't have those out uh, earlier. We've got these underlays, so you can have molten lava, water, or we've got spike traps and uh, swampy area. So what we need is the water underlay. Then we need tile 10B. So to get tile 10B, we're gonna be going through all the tiles. Now I'll take a look for it off camera as there are quite a few of them, but, and I know which one I'm looking for. Well, we got a lot of them and it's uh, the organization system for them. I haven't quite figured out the best way to do it yet. And uh, here we go. So we've got tile 10B. Now I just want to make sure that it matches what we see on the map. So we got tile 10B. We continue. Some more explanations. We will are instructed to then place a site token. We're instructed to place a second site token. So we've got explanations for the site tokens. Even tells you where to find the information on the learn to play. It tells us where we will place Bryn. So we take our miniature for Bryn and place her on the highlighted space. When we continue, we've got our objectives and it is now the hero phase. So what I'm gonna do right now, we've gone through just a lot of the different actions, the conditions, the basics of playing the game. So we're gonna take a quick break. I wanna make sure that I've got everything well positioned because as we continue to explore, well, you're gonna see the map open up. So I might need to change the height and adjust some things on the camera here. So keep it right here, I'll be back in a flash. Now we're gonna teach you how to go through the hero phase and the darkness phase for Descent Journey. Well, Journeys in the Dark is Descent Second Edition and Descent Legends of the Dark. And uh, we quite enjoy both games here. As you will notice, I have changed the orientation of the board. That's because I need some more space as it's gonna be extending out this way. Just a little spoiler there, Julie and I have already played through this mission. Now we're only gonna be going through one round. This will have minor spoilers for what's gonna happen in the tutorial, but no way that I can really do it otherwise because we need to interact with the app. I also corrected where the water was placed. I had it a little too low uh, in the last section. So Brynn is the only character on the map. We've gone through what she can do during the hero phase in the last segment, which is take three actions. One must be a maneuver, which is a movement action. Then we can explore, which is interact with a token on a map. Now, site tokens are a little different. We're gonna interact with them automatically. We may fight an enemy. We may take another maneuver action. We may ready a card, flipping it and discarding all conditions and fatigue on it, or a unique action such as Bryn's out maneuver, which is listed on her card. Now, in order, to interact with a site token, we're gonna to have to drag Bryn to it and we're gonna get nearby. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move one. Oh, we'll go here, one, two. And you know what, I, don't, I think I wanna be here maybe because I can take a step another way. We then drag Bryn's portrait to the site token. Now, if you want to change the orientation, you can also adjust it on the app, which I'll show you in just a second. So we get a little more story and then we're instructed to place more tiles. So we need to place tile 5B, 11B, and two underlays. So we'll have to get the underlays as well as the tiles. So the underlays are pretty easy to find. They're all fairly similar. We've got one water underlay here, and then the other one is here. We will not need these other underlays. And then we needed 5B and 11B, so in order to find them, notice that the numbers are just 
just on there. So this four, not quite five, eight, 16, seven, so it's not in this stack. I'll just, sorry if I'm off camera, just reaching over and grabbing another stack of tiles. I wish there was some type of organization system for this, but unfortunately there is not. So here we go, we've got 5B, and I just need to find 11, there's 12, 14. I feel like it's, 17 is there, so it's gotta be one of the 11 B. So there we go, we've got all the tiles. Now I need to set it up as follows. And as I mentioned, if I want to, I can zoom in, as well as rotate the app as you see, so it can make a little bit more sense to me visually. So first thing I'm gonna wanna do is line up that water that lines up with what we already have. If anything's moving off camera, I apologize. It's gonna be a little tricky just because of the space this all takes up. So I'm gonna place 5B, I'll place 11B, just to make sure that it lines up correctly here. And I will have to move around one or two things. So we're going to just slide Bryn over a little bit. Place her weapon. Of Cyrus's weapon. Oh, and the water actually goes one below. And this is placed as so. So I can move Bryn over a little bit more, give us a little more room. But as you can see, it's a little tricky. Once we interact with the site token, it does get removed got the wonder water underlay, we can make sure that everything ends up correctly, one below the seam, and we've set up the map. So it's now gonna tell us to place any three-dimensional terrain. So I'll tell you that you can interact with the terrain. To do that, you're gonna do the same thing that we just did. We get another site token. And then we have enemies. You also see the color, so this represents orange. It's got this little double notch to help people that are colorblind. So we need to place an orange wolf in that position. So I'm just doing now. The bases snap in for the color quite easily. And we have the wolf facing off against Bryn. We also have to spawn a berserker. So we've got what we need for the Berserker. There, one, two, three, four down, as I can see here. And it says you are under attack. The rules, how you can fight. And then now, because of the sounds of battle, it wakes up everyone else, and is this a two hero game, Cyrus can now come into play in any of these four positions. I'm gonna place Cyrus here. Now he had his crooked staff out and I set that up because in previous section I was showing how to attack, but I always like starting with ranged weapons out typically, especially if you've got a melee character. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to flip Cyrus's wand back to, sorry, flip Cyrus's weapon back to the wand side as that's what I'd intended to start with. And that's quite clear if you watched the uh, first section of the video. And there we go. So we have to defeat the enemies. Now, during each hero phase, each hero takes a turn. Then after Bryn finishes her turn, it's gonna be Cyrus's turn, and then we'll go through the darkness phase. And I, I'm going to fudge a few things afterwards just so that we can show how you interact with stuff. Apologies for that brief descent into darkness. We ran out of juice on the camera and lost the light, but don't worry, our warriors of light are back and we're going to continue explaining the hero phase. Now, as I mentioned, I will show you how to interact with the tree. Now that covers the same type of interaction that you may do with, with objects such as the well, chests, even cauldrons and tables, the way you will be using them is exactly the same. Now, unfortunately, I can't control what you'll be using because that's all run by the app. We're now gonna talk about 
movement and showcase attacking because I really want to get into impeded movement and the wolf is definitely going to be doing that to Bryn. Now we do have our ability here out maneuver which would allow us to shift three then make then attack an enemy and after this attack we can flip the card. What's cool about that is it does allow us to avoid uh, being impeded but because the wolf is here and let's say I wanted to attack the barbarian there's just no way to do it because the moment I move here I become impeded and I lose my remaining two movement points and I would need to be able to move six to get there. So we'll just show that up. One, two, three, four, five, you know, gets me there. You can move diagonally, but I'm impeded the moment I enter this space. So I could do like one movement and then shift three, one, two, three. Sorry, one, two, three, I wouldn't get me there. So there's no way for me to engage the barbarian whatsoever. Doesn't mean that this shift is not going to work well because shift is the only way you can avoid being impeded. Same thing applies to monsters. The moment they enter an adjacent space from the hero, they will become impeded and not be able to continue. So for example, if the wolf was supposed to target Cyrus, they would not be able to get past Bren. And we'll go over that uh, when we get into the darkness phase. Now, you, I don't necessarily want to charge along either as I will reveal another site token which could open up more map more enemies so you want to be conscious of the state of the board before you decide to do anything so what we are going to do though because it's going to put us in the best position overall is we are going to use our shift three action and their second one so i'll maneuver we have to flip the card be able to move three we can ignore being impeded and then we may attack an enemy so this will actually put me in position to interact with the tree I'm going to turn around because she will face her enemy. Fortunately, there's no like backstab rules or anything like that. I'm using the Warden's Blade, which is a slashing weapon. You can see here, slashing with three damage. My other weapon if, would be the Weighted Hammer, which is crushing, as well as three damage. Now, I can use the Fatigue ability if it applies. Unfortunately, there is no adjacent hero, so it does not apply. And... The, Steady defense would let me use a uh, fatigue ability for defense. The card shows that I will roll a black d6. Same thing for defense. So I'm going to attack the wolf. Now to attack the wolf, I simply drag over to it. I pick my weapon and then I will roll my dice and if there's any statuses that I can apply like afflicted, dazed, doom, enfeebled, exposed, and slowed, I can apply those there. Now all of those statuses are listed on your reference card so use that to look them up but you definitely want to to weaken enemies as much as possible. In this case, do it like this, I'll roll the die. I've got four successes and these symbols here, the pluses, and you can see that also on the hero cards. They are advantage, so I have to place a fatigue and it can go on any one of my cards to add a success. Now at this point, as I'm using the Warden's Blade and the chance of me having an adjacent hero, I'm gonna put them both on it. So that gives us a total of four successes, which we then enter into the app. We hit confirm, and the app will deal the damage. And look, lo and behold, the wolf is weak to slashing weapons, which is pretty cool. So the enemy will shift one space towards me. However, I decide to move the enemy, it's up to me. It does not necessarily have to be advantageous. They will shift, they're still adjacent to me, so I will automatically suffer the one damage. Now, I could potentially interact with the tree, but I'm not gonna interact with the tree. I'm gonna try to take out this wolf, but for the sake of just showing you how, if you want to interact with a tree, you would just drag your character over there. We'll showcase that a little later. So the first thing we're going to do is attack the wolf again. We know they're weak. We can get an enemy off the board. It's always my favorite way to do things. So we get three successes. That is the end of the wolf. So we're told to remove the wolf. If we'd gained any items or things like that, it would be listed there as well. Brynn has now taken her three actions. It is the end of her turn. It is now Cyrus's turn. We've got a few different things that we can do. I may want to decide to open this up. If I was playing a four player game, I probably would do that, but that's not what I'm gonna do with Cyrus. I'm gonna move one, two, three, four. I'm also gonna move one, two, three, and 
four. This brings me within range of the Uthuk, so I could be able to attack him. That is two actions. You know what, though? I don't think it's what I really want to do. So I look at where Cyrus is on the map. One, two, three. Sorry. One, two, three, four. One, two. I'm going to move to have him interact with the tree. This is really me teaching you the game, so I'd much rather do that. So in this case, drag Cyrus to the tree. I can decide if I want to try to climb the tree. So to do that, I must test my might. I roll two of these. I can then trigger any surge abilities. I can use any fatigues. Now, in this case, I probably wouldn't necessarily use everything, but as this is just a tutorial, and we're gonna really be breaking it down and stopping after this. We're gonna spend the uh, two fatigue and can go on anything. So that brings me to four, five. My surge ability is, gives me another one. So that brings me to, to six successes, but my might is minus one. So I do still get up the tree, which gives me the, the chance to prepare two cards. And I move twice, that is the end of my turn. However, because I want to show you the different options with the tree, I could forage for plants. And as you can see, I found some items. That would be the other option. I could then also pick fruit, and that would just let me or someone else heal two damage. So you'll see now that the tree is exhausted and you, you can only, uh, well, let's see here. There's nothing else to do with the tree. So keep that in mind though. I mean, I just did a lot of stuff quickly. Don't really want to fudge things. Now, one thing I want to show you before we get rid of any enemies, you can click the enemy map there and you will see the enemies. So you can also just engage them and attack them in that area. So now let's just end the phase and go into the darkness phase. So we resolve infection and terror. Each hero may discard one fatigue. So we discard the fatigue. Infection and terror, we do not have those conditions. We do not have to follow it. We hit continue, it tells us what the Berserker is gonna do. He's gonna move four and target Cyrus. So we're just gonna move him one, one, two, three. So he's gonna move right there, target Cyrus. And it'll attack another hero and he's gonna be able to do it. So he's gonna attack Cyrus and Bryn because of bloodlust for four damage. So what we then do is we must roll defense. We'll roll Cyrus's defense first. So Cyrus gets one and a surge. So he will then suffer two damage because the surge ability is one success and may move one fatigue from one card to another. So I'm down to five. Now Bryn could use the defense, but she might, actually you know what, Bryn's gonna, Prince can take the fatigue right now, so she'll, she'll do it to protect Cyrus because he's a little weaker, so adds one success. Now, he's going to attack Bryn. Roll the die, Bryn gets two successes. So your surge ability will also let her discard a fatigue. So we'll do that, which is pretty cool. And then as you can see, during your attack or defense, if you're adjacent to another hero, add one success. Now, I might be doing this slightly out of order, but I think it's fair because I've made the roll, which will then let me trigger this ability. So then that brings me up to three successes, meaning I take only one damage. So if there was an interrupt or anything that would let you attack the enemy, you would do that then. Once you're done, you'll then get a hint as to what the Berserker is going to do next. You hit continue, and we start the next hero phase. And essentially, you've seen what we can do. I mean, if I wanted to, you know, hit, get rid of this fatigue, try punt whacking the guy, I'd be able to do that. So I could switch to the staff, it's got reach. And just so you see the difference in the attack, the last thing we're gonna do for, for this uh, brief tutorial here, we're gonna drag this over here. We're gonna attack this Uthuk. So anger, he gets mad, it's gonna permanently increase his damage by one. Roll the staff, and we've got a success, a surge, so it turns into another success, and then I can spend a fatigue to convert one of these pluses right there to two successes. So that gives me a total of four. So 
So I hit him for 11 damage. Now, let's pretend I have something else that I could have done that could have potentially have afflicted him. You know, let's say my second attack, he's afflicted. Don't do as well. But you see, sometimes it doesn't do much. The other status is enfeebled. Oh, sorry, exposed, which has 20% damage. If you can get both and get a nice hit, you can see you'll get a boost of damage for 15 damage. You know, and that would get the Berserker off the board. You know, I obviously attacked a bunch. Of, you can see now that after attacking, all this stuff is not going to be set up on the map. But as we said, we're really just going to be breaking it down. One hero phase, one darkness phase. You saw the basics. So I'm going to take a quick break here. I'm going to open up Julian Eye's campaign. And we'll go through what a city phase looks like and show you how you can interact with the world map a little bit. So keep it right here. I'll be back in a flash. All right, so we're going to take a look at the city actions and the world map now in Descent Legends of the Dark. So this is in Julian I's campaign. And as you can see, we're in the city of Frostgate. There's a few places we can go. So this is a smithy where we can install anything that we've crafted. So here we've got Chance. And as you can see, we got nothing in his clawed gauntlet. And we want to fix that. So here we can go over to the crafting hall. We can see what we can do for consumables, you know, armor, trinkets, and then weapon parts. And everything that we have here with a green check mark is something that we can craft. Now you want to spend your resources wisely, but as we've got nothing for Chance's clawed gloves, I know Julie would tell me to craft some better gear for her character. So, sorry, we don't have any better upgrade for his weapon. We've got the clawed gloves, so we're adding that in. So now we're going to go over the smithy here. We'll go to Chance, and in the Shadowcat Gauntlet, we're going to add the claws. I love how it changes the look, but we now have an upgrade, meaning he's got a chance to expose the enemy 25% of the time. And that is all calculated by the app itself. Here we've got a special event, which I'm not going to show you because that uh, gets a little spoilery. But here we can also go back to uh, the market. And depending on the money we've got, we can buy certain things. So look, we've got a whole new crossbow, the Elf Weave crossbow that we can then purchase. And we saw a little earlier that we've got other cards for characters. And I just placed them in the, the wrong spot. So there it is, the Elf Weave Crossbow, which would replace uh, Keeley's current weapon. And then she gets all of these new, new abilities and it can be upgraded as such. So that's how you're gonna be getting some new weapons or potentially finding a recipe and crafting them. We can then buy some crafting materials here at the market as well. We may also sell any of our crafting materials that we may feel we've got in excess. Now the other thing we can then do is go to the world map. And then on the world map, we see points of interest and then also main quest. So we've got the elemental cycle, which is part of the main quest. It requires a specific hero. We can prepare to embark. As you can see, we've got to add specific heroes. And we can add, you know, up to four heroes. We have a choice from our pool of six. Same thing here, we've got the two dreamers, which is a main quest that requires Galadin. These are side quests that we can do. So at this point, it's a narrative event. So we can actually just go experience those narrative events. We can also, yeah, so this one, I believe, is in Frostgate. And because we're back on the city map here. I'm trying to remember if this one is in Frostgate. So we've left the city. See, that's one of the things I, uh, I was getting a little confused there. I'm so used to looking at a world map, you can just hit that back button to go back to the city. So that's how you do the swap. So for the confusion there, I thought there would be a little point. So back and forth or go to a narrative event. And you know, let's just take a quick look at a narrative event. You travel, you get some cool stuff going on here. And then you find yourself at a small graveyard. We just found an item on the way. So that happened on the way. And then we get to the event and oh, we've got some cool story stuff happening. So that's what you saw that we were able to also do in town. And I don't want to spoil it for Julie. So we're closing out of the app here. Got to see a little bit of what's on my iPad. But you, this was a nice overview of the city action and other things that you can do in this game. Now, unfortunately, I didn't quite use that space. thought about a way I could have filled it with just some uh, 
some content, but we've got a full overview now of how to play Descent, the Legends of the Dark. There are definitely some more intricate rules that you'll be able to figure out in the rule book. The app will help you along the way, but I hope you enjoyed the video. So keep it right here as I'll be coming back at you with a quick outro. Thank you very much for watching everyone. If you like what you saw, don't forget to click that like button, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when our next video is released. Also down below in the video description, you'll find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you'd like to see pictures of Julie and I playing Descent Legends of the Dark as we're going through this whole campaign, there will be plenty on those feeds. Also down there is a link to multizone.ca, a great Canadian game store. Click that link, get 10% off your next purchase, and it's a great way for you to support the channel because a portion of that purchase is returned to us. Also popping up in front of me are gonna be links to some of our previously released videos. Over here will be our most recent release, and over here we'll take you back to our re review of Descent Legends of the Dark. And with that being said, don't forget, keep playing games.